and now it's straight facts I don't lie in my raps, Hunter Biden smoke The Democrats know that, Biden ain't with Jack The name is Barack, he a little B like the pack The earth might be flat Welcome back to Andrew Says. Remember, I wouldn't lie to you except for maybe this once the best political podcast in the country. Try to think of a better one for a second. Oh, wait, we can't. Additions to the set. We got a signed picture of Julian from Trailer Park Boys back here. Shout out producer Efron, who for some reason got me that for Christmas. Um, we've got Cartman here from the South Park group Finger Bang. <laughs> um, I didn't say it. South Park said it. Finding you the most ridiculous stories all the time, and you know that I'm going to find them, because here's here's a great example. Um, what's the title here? trans type billionaire who owns Miss Universe pageant wants to change the rules. A mother as well. I misspoke. trans type billionaire mother is not a sentence you hear every week, maybe every other week, but he, she bought uh, Miss Universe, which comes with Miss USA, Miss Teen USA. It's not exactly what you think. We're going to get into it. Please don't forget to go to andrewsaystv.com. I stepped on a cat toy the other day, last night. Cut my toe open pretty bad, so I need your help. I need your support. Go to andrewsaystv.com to find all my links. And, of course, read my ish at theblaze.com. Now, the pageant isn't changing, as you might think, to only trans people, of course. You might think that that's the case. And uh, I probably thought that was the case. You know, I, I like to predict the articles before we see them, but... I know this article now, and I can't really go back on that. I can't lie to you. Only one time am I allowed to lie to you. But I'm sure the trans people are already allowed under this guy being the head of it. But the the thing about the story is, is his backstory is absolutely wild. And I feel like he's, you know, really throwing stuff in the face of the ladies uh, with this story here. Um, he says, I was always a fan of the pageant and grew up watching it with my mother and grandmother. Isn't that cute? Um, also went to a bo- all boys school here. The irony just piles up quote. I was bullied a lot in school because I was a woman trapped in the wrong body. I believe in the power of women to transform into the best versions of themselves. So he's always been a woman, but he just transformed into the best version of himself. Um, then he goes on to like brag about how people used to bully him, but now look who's on TV. Cause apparently this person's on Thai Shark Tank and Thai Project Runway, Project Thaiway, I don't know, Project Guyway, something like that. Thai Shark Tank must be riveting when you got uh, transgender people on the panel. Talked about Shark Tank a bit last week with Eric, and, you know, everything on Shark Tank these days is social justice and being like, what's your story? What's your background? How, are you, how can you sell your victimization? And they all tell their stories. Eric and I talked about on authorized opinions of a Band-Aid company for brown people only. And then, of course, since they've aired on Shark Tank, they've offered white Band-Aids. Interesting how that works. But this person is just a billionaire now, and they believe that, you know, women can transform themselves. So it's really weird that a guy who grew up believing that he was a woman, so he says, a, a a woman trapped in a man's body, in the wrong body, now is growing up and wants to be able to judge, in a sense, the beauty of women. How arrogant is that? Just so arrogant. (laughs) Um, So it's not that only transgender people are allowed now. Women with children or women that are married are now allowed, which apparently wasn't a thing under Donald Trump, I guess. He owned it until he became president. But apparently that wasn't a thing. You got kids or you're married, uh, get the hell out. We don't want to see you. I mean, I'm not sure how that affects how good-looking they are, but I'm sure they might think it affects their ability to travel around the world and and stand for something, which is apparently what they do for Miss Universe. And now what they want them to stand for is courage. Courage to become a woman and then buy your way into controlling what is determined to be pretty or smart or successful. Another weird thing that they're doing with this Miss Universe brand now is they're going to make... I guess apparel's not that weird, but they're going to make products too. They're making products and apparel. And the first thing that they've decided to make is mineral water. That's, I don't know what the point of that is. Are you going to go into store? You see, okay, Evian, Dasani, which sucks. Aquafina, which also sucks. 
Nestle sucked. Why do so many bottled water companies suck? Evian's good. Um, f- the Finland one, I forget. Eska, that's a good one. But then you're going to see Miss Universe water. I don't know what that's going to be like. It's probably going to be sparkling if I had to guess. But, you know, so shout out to this person. I can't even pronounce their name, so I'm not going to tr- try. But one of the best quotes he had other than saying that women can transform into the best versions of themselves was about on the age 38 I became a mother of two or on age at age 38 I became a billionaire at age 40 I became a mother of two and that my friends wraps up the delusion of guy who is a and I'm sorry to be this rude but guy who is a sad little boy getting picked on and then said I'm actually a pretty girl so let me become one and then I can then own the pretty girls, and they have to come to me to determine if they're pretty or not, to see if they're worthy. People picked on me, so now I'm in the position to determine who's beautiful and who's not. It's a sad story. It's a sad story. Sticking in Asia now, sort of. Gwen Stefani in, under tr- in trouble, under the microscope, whatever you want to call it. Did you hear about this? It's very Jalen. Hey, did you hear about this? Rest in peace, Jay Leno. Just joking, he's still alive. Gwen Stefani got uh, some writer triggered from Allure magazine. Allure magazine, of course. Because why wouldn't you if you write for something like that? Um, If you're not old, and I'm only 19, so that doesn't apply to me, but if you're not old, you might not remember that in the early 2000s, Gwen Stefani used to parade around with these Japanese girls, four or five of them, I think, called the Harajuku Girls. They were her backup dancers, but they weren't allowed to speak. So people in interviews, I remember, would try to speak to them, and she would say, you're not supposed to speak to them. They're supposed to be part of my imagination. So it's this weird angle she was working. I mean, it's creative, but it was still weird at the time. And she was huge back then. And so nobody cared. It was weird, of course, that they weren't supposed to speak, but this was her bit, right? Everybody had their bit. Uh, Shakira was weird. She was a wolf lady or something. Christina Aguilera was like, I'm a huge skank now. <laughs> but this was um, this was her bit at the time. And she did an interview about something. Uh, oh, it's it's a new um, a new perfume she's got coming out with this magazine. And they wanted to talk, of course, about something from 20 years ago so they could be offended. And she was talking about the reason why she liked Japan and Japanese culture so much was her father worked for Yamaha, I believe it was. So they would always go back and forth from the United States to Japan. And even though she's Irish and Italian, as it were, she really loved Japanese culture. She said, I kept going back um, and I said, my God, I'm Japanese and I didn't notice. I didn't know it. She kept going to, and then she kept going to Tokyo as an adult. And it was at this point that the Allure writer said that the words of her saying, I was Japanese, I'm Japanese and I didn't notice hung in the air. It was hanging in the air between them, she said. And then Gwen Stefani, which was a little weird, responded with, I am, you know. So that's weird. So on one hand, you just want to be like, this is stupid. You're about to be offended by something that has nothing to do with you. And on the other hand, Gwen Stefani is like, I am Japanese, you know. (laughs) So we've got a couple levels of delusions. But obviously this woman was offended because she writes for this magazine. And this is what she said. "Uh, Like Stefani, I am not Japanese. But I am an Asian woman living in America, which comes with sobering realities during a time of heightened Asian American and Pacific Islander hate. So there's a couple of things here that are wildly enraging. The first is that Asian American and Pacific Islanders, you're not the, these aren't the same things. Is a Samoan person or the same as a Chinese person? Like is it Pacific Islanders now? Samoans are just, you're just lumping them in there because I don't know, there has to be some sort of thing. That involves them. I'm sure they don't care. Samoans are very strong people, uh, mentally and physically. I'm sh- I'm gonna go. I don't know any Samoans, but I'm fairly certain that they don't care about this stuff. Football players, wrestlers, a lot of athletes, Hawaiians too, a lot of athletes, um, Jiu Jitsu, BJ Penn, um, Max Holloway, both from Hawaii. Dog the Bounty Hunter, not from Hawaii, but from Hawaii, you know. These aren't weak people. You don't need to lump them into your weird racialization of everything. And then she says, I'm not Japanese, but I'm Asian. 
were... <laughs> She says, I spent 32 minutes in conversation with Stefani, many of them devoted to her lengthy answer to my question about Harajuku lovers, which I guess is the perfume she had named after the girls. In that time, she said more than once that she's Japanese. Yes, weird. But then she says, words don't have to be hostile in their, in their intent in order to cause potential harm. And my colleague and I walked away from that half hour unsettled. What is this desperation to become a victim here? I'm not Japanese, but I come from the same continent. So like, you know, I'm not from Texas, but I'm very offended when you make fun of cowboys and or from Calgary, and I'm very offended that you make fun of cowboy hats. I mean, I'm I'm not Texan or Calgarian, but I'm from the same continent. I'm a victim too. So the takeaway here should have been: it's weird that Gwen Stefani is persistent that she's Japanese on that fact. She's persistent about it. That's kind of weird. But we didn't see her in person. Maybe she was just like, I am, you know. <laughs> or maybe she was like, I am, you know. I am Japanese. Believe me. Or else. We don't know how she said it. It's in text. This is why this is terrible, because we're still doing text interviews, probably because Gwen Stefani doesn't want to give you more content because you're a crazy person. But to say that you're offended because you're not the same nationality of the people she's appropriating, but because your family comes from the same continent is insane. So when people like this say, you know, you can't ask where my background is from or where my family is from or because that's racist, you then want to say, well, actually, this is my background, and it's racist for you to talk about or act like you're from a culture that is not mine, but all, but just kind of similar in the same content from mine. It doesn't make any sense. CNN apparently also had a problem with Gwen Stefani last summer, summer 2022, because she did a song, she was on a song called Light My Fire, where she wore dreadlocks in the video and wore the colors of the Jamaican flag. Who was on the song? Sean Paul and some woman named Shen Sia. Sorry if I'm mispronouncing that. But they're both Jamaican. That's the problem here. She's in a music video with Jamaicans, and she's wearing dreadlocks and the colors of the Jamaican flag, but they don't care about it. They're happy to have this video published and out there in the world and get millions of views. But the woman from CNN who wrote about that is offended. It's outrageous. <laughs> I mean, Gwen Stefani, again, if you're 96 years old, you remember she had two Jamaican guys in No Doubt with her. She had Jamaican songs with Jamaican accents with them. She recorded that album back then with all these Jamaican people, partially in Jamaican, Jamaica, sorry, and also producers from Jamaica. Pharrell was another producer. And I'm not a super fan. I just wrote wrote this article, so I'm sorry if you think I'm obsessed with Gwen Stefani. TBH. But she even recorded this stuff in Jamaica with Jamaicans, and still she's not allowed to like Jamaica either. And maybe she just likes all these other cultures other than the Irish and Italian. Half of my family's Irish. Well, I, I know some Italians. I'm French. You can make fun of it all day. I don't care. Why do people care about this? I'll never understand. It's a, a defense mechanism to not having anything interesting about you. Once you start finding identity in things that don't matter, like your race or your family's historical origin, I mean, it's okay to have an identity related to that, but once you start using that as a defense mechanism and the basis for everything that you do, then you've got a problem called loserism. <laughs> You've got a problem where you've got nothing else going for you. If I'm going around and throwing poutines and Joe Louis, which is the little pastry at people, and saying, hey, you don't like it because you don't like my culture. What's wrong with you? Then there's probably going to be a few people who are just thinking that I'm a little bit crazy. And I know that's a ridiculous example, but if you actually think that somebody's, you know, saying that Napoleon was bad or something, or that the Eiffel Tower stinks, or that Quebec people are sensitive, which they are, Quebec, Canada, France too, then that's fine. But if I'm going to say that in order for you to say that to me, you have to acknowledge that it's because you're racist and therefore give me money and access to power, then I'm a crazy person. And that's the long and short of it. People who are obsessed with this stuff are, are just crazy people. They want to be liked for something that has nothing to do with them, and they want to be given power and money for things that they don't deserve. Sorry, moving on. Woman who joined ISIS in 2014 wants to come home to Alabama. Now, this one is crazy. 
And that's what we do here. Andrew says TV.com, the craziest stories, sometimes dumbest, as you can see. Um, this woman in 2014 joined ISIS. She's from New Alabama, was born in New Jersey, so she's American. And in 2014, she told her family she was going on a school trip, but instead flew to Turkey, then went to Syria and joined ISIS. She cashed her tuition checks to pay for this. So she joins ISIS. She tells her parents she's going on a school trip, goes to Turkey, shout out Mocha, um, and then goes to Syria and becomes an ISIS bride, gets impregnated by an ISIS member, thinks it's amazing. Can't just join ISIS and shut up, you know? Just Can't just live the good life of ISIS and shut up, can she? No. I, I keep thinking somebody's going to cut parts of this and be like, oh my God, what a bigot. But... She can't just join and, you know, live this life if she wants of global jihad and terrorism and insanity. If you guys remember, ISIS was doing crazy stuff back then, probably still is, D burning people alive, drowning them in cages, stuff like that. And then she wants to come back. This isn't the first time she wanted to come back. She, the problem is when she joined ISIS, she did it publicly. 2015 she tweeted and this just goes to show you that like everything but conservatism or anything questioning the status quo was allowed on twitter in 2015 she tweets this quote go on drive-bys and spill all of their blood or rent a big truck and drive all over them veteran veterans patriot memorial etc day parades dot dot go on drive-bys plus spill all their blood or rent a big truck and drive all over them kill them she said, insanity. First of all, terrible grammar for a girl. I guess she was born in New Jersey, raised in Alabama. That's why her grammar is terrible. Sorry. But terrible grammar. Learn how to, you know, spew your hate in a logical and form formulated way. But this is stuff she was saying. And then in 2019, she still wanted to come back just four years later. And um, they said no. Trump said no. Um, after she tweeted this, Obama his administration delete press the old delete button on her citizenship, which is pretty rare. And then in 2019, she tried to come back and Trump was like, nah. And now she's trying to come back again now that it's Biden. And the thing about this is she knows how to play the game. She's inside a Syrian refugee camp. She's raising a kid there, which is probably why she wants to leave. She says, Oh, ISIS people are still here. There's still people loyal to ISIS. So I'm at great risk telling you this. She, in 2019, when she was asking to come back, she was wearing a headscarf. Now in her interview, she's not wearing a headscarf. She's just wearing a beanie, like the great Andrew says merch back here. And she's just talking about how she still feels like she's a citizen. The worst day of her life was how somebody told her she's not a U.S. citizen. Not watching people die. Not watching people be murdered and tortured and raped and all this jazz. I was about to do a Bill Cosby impression here, but it's not appropriate. It's the J is a versus. Um, that's not all the worst days of her lives. The worst day of her life is having her citizenship taken away from her, even though she joined a terrorist group and then said to kill, to commit terrorist attacks. This is the worst day of her life is not being able to go back home because she realizes it's actually nicer there living under uh, a jihadist terrorist state is not the greatest living. And now she wants to come back. I don't think it's going to happen. They try this a lot. Um, it works more so in countries like the United Kingdom because they're wussy there um, and weird. And people actually make not physical petitions, but they petition for them to come home. I'm sure there is probably one for the UK one. We'll double check that with our vast production crew here that managed to turn the light on this time. In some countries, that story works. In some countries, I regret it. I shouldn't have joined the terrorist group. I shouldn't have stood by while they drowned people in cages. Um, I'm a victim now. Why won't you let me come home? In some places, that works. So I'm surprised that even, you know, Ob the Obamas have limits. I'm surprised but happy about that. So the next time somebody thinks that they can just join a country that's at war with you, then they might think again. Having said that, there is this place now called Ukraine now that's supposed to be the greatest place in the world. And I have a feeling that if you went to war to fight for Ukraine and you stay there as long as you want and you actually start saying, you know, any country that opposes Ukraine sucks, China sucks, 
Um, you know, India sucks. They're on the side of Russia, too. If you say these things, I have a feeling that you're going to be allowed to come back because, you know, Ukraine's the greatest place in the world. And we've learned that now. So if you go and you fight for a foreign adversary, I think times have changed enough that if you are enough of a victim that people will allow it, but not ISIS because it actually happened before all this happened. If, you know, ISIS became a thing, um, 2017, 2018, 2019, instead of when it did, then I have a feeling that there would be like, you know what? America, America is not the greatest place. It's, it's very racist. We should give ISIS its own, you know, caliphate or nation state somewhere and if you go and fight for them, you know, you're actually fighting the injustices of the Western nations in the Middle East and and the racism that's been perpetuated against these people um, makes it so that you don't have any other choice but to but to join a psychotic murder cult like ISIS. And therefore, you should be let back and you should be given benefits. And, and that's the point here is that why doesn't this girl just go and travel by a plane ticket out somehow? I, I mean, I don't know how she's going to get there. But if she just crossed the Mexican U S border, bam, she doesn't have to be a citizen. She can claim refugee status. She's in a literal refugee camp. She can claim refugee status in Mexico, get into the United States, have benefits like that, be bust to Martha's Martha's vineyard. And you know, as they say, jihad's your uncle. This is the world we're living in people. And I don't think that enough people take into consideration what the actual world is like outside of the United States, like this girl or like the woman who says that everything's offensive, even because she's from the same continent. But it's getting to the point now where even the most ridiculous things like joining ISIS, you have to think that it's probably going to be in the news cycle for a day and then forgotten about, which is to this girl's benefit. And maybe just maybe with a little bit of thoughts and prayers, she can come back. Remember, I wouldn't lie to you, except for maybe this once. I can't speak. My toe's bleeding. Good night.